Yeah. Okay. Um, Brandon? Sounds good. Brandon. Brandon in Arizona. Hello. Hey, Eric. How are you? Doing good. You're talking to, yeah, Eric and V. Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, actually on with you and Matt, but Matt likes to hang up on me every time, so I figured <laughs> I'd call in, and you're a little more patient, so I was, uh, you know, I'm going to give him a shot. Sure. I'm feisty so. today, though, so. Yeah, he's on a roll. <laughs> But I, well, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, my, my main topic, you know, my, my center point of proof for God is Jesus himself. You know, he claimed that he was God manifest in the flesh, mm-hmm. and that's why they crucified him. Okay. And then, you know, my other point is, is that, uh, you know, uh, the Bible... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, prophecy. Brandon. Sorry. No, 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 that's okay. Sure. I just... I want to talk about your first point first, because otherwise I'm going to forget. I know me. Um, If you're by chance in a car or outside or anything like that, it is a lot of background, bud. Oh, sorry. I'm in Arizona, so I'm sitting in front of the AC. That's what you're probably doing. Yeah. Anything you can do to help us uh, with that that sound. It sounds infinitely better better? already. Oh, Oh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, So you're saying that uh, one of your proofs for God is the character of Jesus Christ. Um, and so, yep. yeah, it's it's loud again. Um, Brandon, that is incredibly yep. distracting. <laughs> um, I'm going to pop okay, you on hold. Is ho- that better? Yes. Okay. If it gets too much louder, though, we're going to need to move on to the next caller because it's, it's a huge distraction. Yeah. No, it sounds like you're in a wind <laughs> turbine. Um, I'm going to pop you on hold. Uh, you might be able to it's work with one bad. of our people in the back. Yeah. Yes. No. Here, hold on. Let me try this. Let me- <laughs> Go to a different room. Something. <laughs> Anything. Hello? Is that her? Yes. Yes. Now stay okay. right there. Stay right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so you're talking about the character of Jesus, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I can say that there are tons of, uh, you know, number one, mythological creatures or mythological um, characters who were pious and kind and helpful and yada, yada, yada. That doesn't mean, this doesn't make them true. But even if we do look at real life characters, we can look in the last hundred years at cult leaders, right? Cult leaders who've said and have demonstrated to, to people who will testify and have testified that they've seen them rise from the dead that these people are the incarnation and second coming of Christ. There's a guy right now who's claiming to be Jesus Christ, isn't there? Um, oh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a guy who's gotten a lot of media coverage recently. Whatever, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so, that's okay. But <laughs> you know, anyway. Where, Jesus, you know, where well, proof was provided so that Jesus didn't just, you know, look like some other madman okay. claiming to be God. Okay, so... Wh- that is actually the purpose of wh- prophecy. Okay, what sets you know, your... What sets you, the Christ character as, uh, as, as distinct from some Yahoo? First so de- definitely uh, prophecy is okay. the, one of the main points of distinction. That is okay, do, the do, purpose do, of that. You do realize that there are people who create what they call prophecies... All the time, and well, uh, you know, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but I mean, yeah. if I believe if any you know rational human being with any kind of intellect at all actually sat down and studied the prophecies and examined the mathematical probabilities of bullshit. this guy, no, hold on a second, I'm not even gonna let you finish the sentence. Bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. Do you know what a Barnum statement is? I don't. Cool. Uh, Barnum. Uh, the only reason I say it's cool is because I'm I'm always happy to teach things. Barnum statements are statements that seem very specific, but could apply to pretty much anybody. Those are the things that you read in the horoscope, right? Um, the other side of it is we don't know who most of the authors were of the Bible, and so it is very likely, especially when those prophecies are mentioned after the fact, that they only ever existed in the mind of the author. Right. And, and the example that I give, and I've, I know I've brought it up before, I say, you know, well, in my holy book, the book of Eric, I wrote down this morning that the September 11th Twin Towers attack is going to happen on September 11th, 2001. I, I think you would agree with me that that's wholly unremarkable because it's after the fact, right? Absolutely. Okay. So is there any way that you can 
it, it, it's just, it's, it's so hazy. And then what the hell do you mean by mathematical let me probability? Like, let me give like just my favorite one. Okay. Is in the book of Daniel, you know, and all of the, you know, all scholars and Bart Ehrman and everybody can tell you that this book was written 700 years before Jesus was ever born. And in, in Daniel chapter nine, this is when the angel Gabriel comes and tells Daniel that in exactly 483 years after the decree is made for the walls to be rebuilt in Jerusalem, because at that time they were in exile in Babylon, that in exactly 40, 483 years from that date, that the, the Messiah was going to walk through the gates of Jerusalem being hailed as the Messiah and you know humbly riding on an ass. So now... An exa- so, and that's, you know, a Jewish okay. calendar is 360 days. So if you do the math, that's 170,880 days. Brandon, and it- well, I, I, so I can already tell you exactly where I disagree. And the disagreement is I have no stock in the book that you're pulling that from at all. Sure. but And so if I have zero but- stock in that book, it would behoove you. To sure. but but I mean you're, show you're somebody that understands mathematical probabilities and whatnot. Yes, and in and, and exactly one hundred and seventy three thousand eight hundred and eighty days later, Jesus rode da- rode through the gates of Jerusalem on an ass. If that's what the- happened, Brandon. But all yeah, we have a- is a story, an ups- an unsubstantiated story, by the way, that only says it's true between its covers. Right. I mean, I, I can open up any book. I can open up, and I'll, I'll just reach toward Harry Potter. Right. It doesn't explicitly say in Harry Potter, "This is a work of fiction. Do not read this." But it is internally consistent. Right. Um, Harry Potter is the chosen one, and it was foretold ever since he was a baby. And yet, it happened. What are the odds? Do you see how ridiculous this is to me? Sure. Yeah. Well, so let's let's do this. Let's go into the, let's travel down into the land of if for a minute. So now, if the land of for if. example, you know the, these prophecies that were given about the Messiah coming, you know it was already prophesied that the Messiah was going to be born from a virgin. According to the book. Be to, yeah, this is all in the book, of course. Yeah. Just so like it, I mean, it's it's just like Harry Potter. Would have to examine examine the prophecies and the different dates of when each book was written mm-hmm. to, to kind of go over the math, mathematical possibilities no. of this even happening. There's, you know, there's right. no way that a human being or a group of human beings could have wrote this book. That's, Wait. that's my point. It's, okay. Hold on. There's no way human beings could have written this book. Brandon, I'm going to drop this on you. <laughs> Humans wrote the book. <laughs> And to say otherwise would imply something that is impossible. We'll, we'll see. Because what you're saying is that not humans wrote that book. And to the best of our knowledge, that's not a possible... I mean, we can, we can program computer algorithms to write a book, um, but... That's still ultimately a human doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but Sure, but it's all given under the inspiration of God. Like God... How do you know that? Human that's just an assertion though, Brandon. Right. Sorry? Do you, do you see where this is getting circular, Brandon, a little bit? Because you're saying this prophecy uh, proves that this book was written by God. And the proof that I have that this book was written by God is the prophecy inside of it. You can't refer to your conclusion in one of the premises. That's circular logic. That's not. That's not. Well, a valid I'm argument. saying that prophecy is the element that proves that you know. Yes, humans you, know, you were holding the pen, but it was something beyond human beings that actually was writing the book. That was yeah, telling them what okay. to write. Yes, and I'm also <laughs> God, and this book is also um, 100% real, and I'm 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 your deity. Um, until you can actually substantiate the claim, we can say w- random weird bullshit too. It's not well, just it's, it's not just the realm of Christianity. We can say all kinds of stuff, um, but until well, we actually have to back it up, Israel becoming a nation again—that's something that's happened more in our modern time. Okay. Yes. In, in, 
I, I, and also, do you know how many times people have pointed at that kind of stuff? Especially when you look at, oh, what was the name? Uh, he did a bunch of prophecies, um, and they could apply pretty much oh, anywhere. Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Thank you. Yeah. Um, when you make it vague enough and you yeah. wait long enough, sure. And especially if you motivate a people to do it. Right, exactly. I mean, you have, at the time, especially at the time of, of the creation of, the, of Israel, this was a nation that was so caught up in wanting to make sure that they emblazoned their Christianity on every last thing, that they put it on the currency, that they put it in the pledge, and that they took actions to try and fulfill prophecies that they thought needed to happen. Please, Wholly unremarkable. You think, you think the Jews tried to fulfill prophecy? No, I'm talking yeah, but, about us. Yeah. What, like the Christian nation? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the massive amount of people here in the United States. You know that it's still on the run, books that you can't even run, run for run. office if you're an atheist? Yeah, you know, let, let me you know the people in a good study for you is Dave Hunt did a video called Islam, uh, Islam, uh, uh, Israel and Armageddon that really you know does a great job of breaking down the, the, the prophecies. And I mean, you know, I just yeah. don't think you can look I, at that evidence and go, hey, yeah, you know, human beings were capable of doing this. You know what? Um, if it's anything like Lee Strobel's case for Christ <laughs> and that exact argument that was made yeah. in there. Yeah, it's not. I'm not a fan of Lee Strobel. Okay, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. I'm going to spend actual time watching this. And I swear, if it is bullshit, Brandon, I am burning your ears. <laughs> okay? okay? That's fine. I'm told, I, told, I, I totally invite you to do that because, you know, that's where real Christianity comes into stop, play. Is stop, stop. Whoa, <laughs> stop. Brandon, don't, don't be a Scotsman on top of everything. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. No, no, Don't do it to other people. To Don't be a true Scotsman because that's ridiculous. No. But no, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, God doesn't expect us to just have faith in some pie in the sky guy out in the middle of space. It's what we're really supposed to have faith in is, is in God's word. And that's why, you know, the, and, I'm, and I just want you to know the, the only Bible I believe is the real Bible is the King James Bible. Oh, oh yes. No. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Oh man! Uh, There's a lot hey. of big problems with the other version. Mm. Oh, I, oh, mm, mm. I. So, the King James Bible is particularly fun, <laughs> um, and I'll let you argue with other Christians about it because I don't have time for it. But sure, whew, that's that's if if they're if I they're all Harry Potter book. books. That's my favorite. point, real quick. Oh yeah, that's my favorite. That's Prisoner of Azkaban. There you go, right? Oh there. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, as far as you know, I mean, it's you know, if you do the math, it, he was you know told that he was going to come through one hundred and seventy three thousand eight hundred and eighty days later, and to the exact day is when he came through the gates of Jerusalem. Yeah, and now, you, you know, we just responded. So either you weren't listening, or it was not, um, a, it, it was not compelling. One way or the other, well, we told you why it's not compelling for us. So repeating it more. It's only because it's just in the Bible was your 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 rebuttal, right? Yeah. So th this is where, you know, so... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving you the uh, argument uh, from Harry Potter. <laughs> well, I mean, Harry Potter doesn't have exact, precise... Uh, yes, it does. Prophecy. Yes, it does. It will say, it, it, it says Potter. that Harry Potter is the chosen one. That uh, that uh, that. Show me an example of a of a prophecy that came to pass in in a Harry Potter Harry Potter book. Yeah, the all kinds of man. Read the books. <laughs> I mean, they make sense yeah. in the books. Like it doesn't happen in the real world. To do that, we'd have to substantiate that with real world evidence. In the same way that you would need to. And in the meantime, those are the same. That's Going the point. Back to Israel becoming a nation again. If you understood the okay. incredible odds that they were up against, and now we're so repeating ourselves. Of, um, no, Brandon, we're repeating ourselves. Um, but go back, watch this, and um, uh, I'm, I would love to talk to you again. Uh, but yeah, dude, it just doesn't. It doesn't hold water. Yeah. Um, it need yeah. you, you well, need to be able to back it up, sure and I'm what you're requiring. To encourage you because you, you're a, you're a smart guy. If you actually oh, examine the prophecies, I do not believe you'd be able to walk away from the table thinking mere humans wrote this book. Why yeah. do you assume that we haven't 
why do you make the assumption oh. that we haven't looked at these? Um, I, I mean, I'm, you know, it's just, a, I would guess, uh, I would say it's an educated guess just because it's, you know, uh, I, do, I don't think that anybody of reasonable intellect could possibly walk away from the table. Just so you know, I was not I, brought so, up Christian. Uh, so I, I was, party. and V was as well. And I'll tell you, even since I became an atheist, I've read the Bible three times, King James, NIV, and ESV. I've studied yeah, in different religions Christian with different groups, myself, and I've, I've, minute, I've looked. And the fact is, I'm going to leave you with this. Anytime I see an atheist say, I cannot imagine how a Christian could be so dumb. Every time somebody says, I, don't, I cannot believe that somebody with sufficient intellect would follow that the Bible is real. I chastise them. I call them to the floor because we do see a lot of very intelligent Christians, just like a bunch of very intelligent atheists. And because of that, all it does is smear other humans and it doesn't actually do very well for conversation. And so the only reason that I'm chastising you is because I do the exact same to my side, my friend. Don't say I mean, if, someone with sufficient look at intellect. English history, I mean, you do know, if you've studied the Bible at all, you do know that God did spoke, speak to the, the Jewish people. In the book. The, you know, when they, in the book. Brandon, we're repeating ourselves. It's in the book. <laughs> history, dude. It's, it's not just in the Bible. Really? Where in recorded yeah. history did God all speak of, to all people? All their traditions and everything. They, yes, they because traditions. Traditions out of nowhere. We do it all right. the time. <laughs> We do it all the, the time. Did not. I mean, the Jew, the point, you know a lot about Jewish culture, my friend. If you think that Jews are the I, only I group did. in in the history of humanity that has never created a, a created a culture and traditions. Yeah. Wow. What what other culture decided to circumcise their penises? Uh. <laughs> and with that, Brandon, we're going to let you go for the day. But uh, you take care and. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, oh, no, I, I agree. It's horrendous. And um, I think genital mutilation is genital mutilation. Uh, but, but hey, you know what? Uh, all cultures have really I'll terrible things. So take care, buddy. Yeah, uh, hopefully we get to talk again. I'd like that. Yeah. Definitely. Bye. <laughs> um, so... Mm. Oh, that's funny. In the live show, in the live chat, somebody goes, "You've finally jumped the shark, Brandon." <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, I saw somebody put in, "What does Eric have against Scotsmen?" Oh, I keep it's forgetting. Like Scotsman. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, people, I, I, I forget the people yeah. watch this, and this can be your very first time watching the show. Yeah. Um, and I've been talking and completely blowing you out of being able to talk. I've been enjoying it. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so do you want me to just... Sure, if you'd like to. Yeah, okay. So we love Scotsmen, all Scotsmen, not just true ones. Um, so the, the, it's a no true Scotsman fallacy. So the, fa the, the argument goes, uh, uh, my uncle is uh, no Scotsman puts sugar in his porridge. That's the first person. Second person says, uh, my uncle is Scottish and he puts sugar in his porridge. Wow. And then the, third, the first person replies, well, no true Scotsman puts sugar in his porridge. So the whole point of that fallacy uh, when applied elsewhere is um, you can dismiss any argument by saying, well, you're, you're just wrong. You don't have the right way of looking at this. You're not a true Christian. You're not a true Christian if you believe that you need to, uh, no, tr no Christian believes that you need to be baptized in order to be saved. I believe, I'm a Christian and I believe that, oh, well, you're not a true Christian. And it just waves away the fact that there are inconsistencies or that there are disagreements by oh, yeah. just saying that. So. And and when I was a Christian, we did that to hand wave away Mormons, oh, yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses, everybody. Uh, Catholics. I, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I was non-denominational. So that was yeah. everybody except for <laughs> like the 10 people in my group. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yep. Got yep. culty really quick.